Let's get some analysis with Pete Williams, our justice correspondent. Also, Neil Katyal, a former clerk for Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer, the former acting solicitor general and a supporter of abortion rights. And Neil, uh, before we get into the substance of the opinion, this is beyond unheard of that I am sitting here holding a draft opinion of the Supreme Court. What makes you feel that it is legitimate, that this is not some kind of fake, but that this is a real draft opinion? You've worked at the court. Yeah, so and I've held draft opinions, Savannah, and they look exactly like this. I mean, I could imagine some deep state foreign act, I mean, some foreign government could have invested the kinds of resources to do this, but it's impossible. It's really impossible. This is a legitimate draft opinion. It uses language that Justice Alito is known to use. As Pete says, it tracks what Justice Alito said at the oral argument. It's just devastating to read. It's only a draft opinion. It's possible the court could change its mind. But what this draft opinion says is that five justices, after they heard oral argument in the Mississippi case in December, adopted the most full-throated opinion, they, full, full-throated uh, position they could, which is to fully overrule Roe versus Wade and uphold the Mississippi law, which has no rape or incest exception. So that can now be the law in all 50 states. Pete, as mentioned, there are, appear to be five justices who are ready to overturn Roe. How far does the reasoning in this opinion go? Um, you know, obviously Roe found a right to privacy in the Constitution that's been used subsequently to for all kinds of constitutional rights. So how narrowly drawn is this opinion? No, it's not narrowly drawn at all. And it says that the, the, the Roe was fatal from the beginning, from the root on down. And I think one of the things that's surprising about this leak, Savannah, is I'm not sure what the point of it is. It, uh, you know, people leak in Washington for all sorts of reasons to try to change policy outcomes. I don't see how this leak changes anything. I, I think all nine justices came into the courtroom knowing how they were going to vote on this case. I think they voted that way after the case was argued. And I don't think this leak is going to change any minds. I, I can't understand, unless it's just I know something you don't know, I can't understand the point of this. Well, Neil, let's turn to you on that. Again, you worked at the court. Let's do the forensics. It's got to be a rather small universe of people who have access to an opinion like that. Who might be able to leak it? Who would have the motive? And what might that motive be? I can't imagine. I mean, honestly, Savannah, this is so uh, foreign. Um, you know, the justices, the law clerks take the traditions here so, so seriously. Um, and as Pete says, it's hard to understand the point of the leak. I mean, there is a world in which we don't know how Chief Justice Roberts is going to vote in this case. Uh, but. Chief Justice Roberts is kind of irrelevant at this point. There's Justice Alito plus four justices to the right of the Chief Justice who've signed on to this tentative opinion. So even if Chief Justice Roberts' vote is in play, unfortunately, his vote doesn't matter. He's lost the court. This draft opinion looks like it was written by Robert Bork, the failed nominee in 1988. It is as extreme an opinion as the conservative legal movement has been agitating for for decades. Neil Cott, y'all, thank you. Pete Williams as well. Appreciate your analysis. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.